Hi there, I'm Robin, and today I'd like to dive into a game-changing technology that's making waves in the world of cybersecurity. That's remote browser isolation. Now picture this. You're browsing the internet, searching for information, catching up on news, or even doing a little bit of online shopping. But did you know that lurking behind those seemingly harmless websites are potential threats just waiting to invade your device? That's where remote browser isolation comes to the rescue. So what exactly is remote browser isolation? Well, it's a revolutionary approach to online security that isolates your web browsing activities in a virtual environment. Now imagine a bodyguard that stands between you and the wild web, ensuring that any malicious content you encounter stays far, far away from your device, like a digital force field. But you might be wondering, how does it work? And that is a great question. Now, remote browser isolation, at a high level, operates by running your web browser sessions on remote servers. When you click on a link or access a website, all the complex and potentially risky operations take place on these external servers, far away from your local machine. If you're using Kato, this would be our points of presence. Now, while using remote browser isolation, what you see on your computer is just a safe, interactive stream of the web content, just the pixels, with none of that uh, potentially malicious stuff. That's all gone. Your virtual bodyguard screens every website, making sure it's safe before you use it. Now, you might be wondering, why do I need this? My antivirus software already is doing the job. Well, my friends, here's the thing. Traditional security measures like antivirus software have their limitations. They're often reactive, identifying threats after they've already infiltrated your system, or they require known signatures to identify. But with remote browser isolation, you're getting proactive prevention. Even if the malicious websites try to launch an attack, your actual device remains untouched because all of the risky elements are contained in that isolated environment. RBI is yet another layer of protection between you and the threat actors out there who deem to wish you harm or steal your data. Not only does remote browser isolation protect your device from malware, phishing attacks, and other online threats, but it also provides a seamless browsing experience. You can access any website you would want without worrying about compromising your personal or business data. The websites still work, even though you're being protected. All right, folks, that's the lowdown of remote browser isolation. It's a game changer in the world of cybersecurity, and I can't wait to show you how it works in action. So let's jump on over to the Kato Management application and let's see the power of our technology in action. Stay tuned. And of course, it's YouTube. Hit that button if you're excited as I am. Like, subscribe, and let's take our online security to the next level. See you over there. Okay, here we are in the Kato Management application. First, I'm going to have a look at what happens when we try accessing a potentially malicious website. As you can see, my Kato client is currently disconnected. My client is going directly to the internet without the protections of the Kato SASE cloud. So I will navigate to rbicheck.com. And as you can see, we have automatically had a file download, rbicheck-sync.txt. If I was to open this, you can see it's just a simple text file with a word loaded. Nothing really to be concerned of at this time, as this is a demo environment. Now, if I was to click, I am a human. Oh, oh no, we've downloaded that file again. Now, imagine you are going to a website and there's a drive-by attack. Somebody wishes you ill harm. And once you go to that website, a script is automatically loaded in the back end, files are downloaded, your browser is hijacked, and everybody is unhappy. That is what RBI can help protect against, one of many use cases. So, let's get RBI enabled. Now, it's very, very simple. And I'm not including my face in this because it's just about technology. What we want to do is enable RBI. Now there's three things you need to do, three prerequisites. First of all, you need an RBI license. This is a licensed feature by Kato Networks. So if you don't currently have a license, I recommend talking to your Kato account representative and we can progress that forward. Second of all is we need to enable TLS inspection. We can do that by going to the security tab at the top of the page, navigating over to TLS inspection and verifying this is enabled. The majority of internet traffic is currently served via HTTPS, encrypted. The TLS inspection allows us to inspect those encrypted payloads, ensuring that no malicious content or no viruses move through the internet. By enabling TLS inspection, your data is secured and protected through the Kato SASE backbone, 
However, you have full visibility of all of that traffic. So TLS inspection for me is enabled. The next thing that you must verify is that under your internet firewall, you have access to securebrowsing.catonetworks.com. So if you have a rule at the end of your internet firewall rule base saying to block any any, so if it doesn't match a rule within the rule base, it would block it. Make sure that you can access secure browsing. Very, very simple. Okay, now I verified all of those prerequisites have enabled. I'm going to go over to the RBI section on the left hand side. And quite easily, I'm going to turn on this toggle, RBI enabled, and click save. Easy, easy. Now you can see on this website that it explains what RBI is. So if you're unsure and you forget, that's understandable. However, we also have this option of a fallback action. You currently have two options of either blocking or prompting. I'm going to go for block. So in the event that somebody tries to access a website that matches your RBI policy, we will automatically block that connection. Now, if you're not really sure what RBI would look like, we also have this RBI simulator. So if I was to enter a website, I don't know, uh, let's say youtube.com and I click generate, it will generate a secure browsing URL, which you can open in a new tab and see what the user experience for remote browser isolation would be. As you notice, it says connecting to site, it's spinning around and the user will have a nice remote browser isolation. Let's accept the terms and conditions. I presume everybody's read that. They'd have a nice remote browser isolation tab at the top. Notice the URL bar. It says securebrowsing.catonetworks.com. The traffic is going through Cato Secure Browsing Servers. Now you might be wondering, does this mean that we have limited activity? Well, not so much. If I was to go to a fantastic channel, maybe a Cato Networks channel, and look at a podcast, here's a podcast that pops up. Hi, Bill. How are you doing today? Robin, it feels like it's been forever. I'm great, man. How are you? Everything's still playing as expected. The user can still access YouTube. They can still watch videos. They can still access online games. However, all of that data is secured and protected. This is because the full website isn't being delivered to your end user machine. Instead, we're just streaming the pixels, the canvas element, ensuring that your users get the full experience of the internet without any of the associated risks. So let's go back to the Cato management application and continue setting up RBI. What I will do is go over to the internet firewall and I'll have a very focused RBI activity. Let's create a new rule and I'm going to call this one block uncategorized websites. Would be useful if I knew how to spell. And I'll put this for the simplicity, I'll put that as the rule order of three. We do operate on a sequential rule base and I want this at the top of the stack. Now the source, the source of the traffic, we can specify individual users, sites, groups, ranges. For this, I'm going to choose anyone, anyone and anything. We can choose this to apply to individual devices, countries or device posture profiles. I'll leave that as anything. We can have this apply to individual apps or categories. Now for this, I just want to look at the uncategorized and undefined. I want RBI to be triggered at any application or any website which we don't know or we're unsure of. If it's been uncategorized, it could be a brand new domain that's been created, which is intended to steal all of your data. Or if it's undefined, it might be a low popularity domain that may be a tad suspicious. Now, it doesn't mean it's malicious. However, in the world of security, it's always better to be safe than secure. So I'll just choose those two. We can also opt for individual service and ports, but I'm not going to do that now. I'm interested in this actions field. This action field, we don't want to block, we don't want to allow, we don't want to prompt, we don't want to give that user the option to click through. We want to invoke remote browser isolation. So I will choose this, I will choose to track an event, and I want this to happen all the time. I click apply. And of course, don't forget to click on that save button. Okay, so now it's saved. You would presume you could open a new tab and then go to rbicheck.com and it will be blocked. However, you notice that things are still downloading. We have that drive by attack once again, and the RBI check sync file has been downloaded. Why? Hmm. Ah, the answer is quite simple. We have the policies configured, we have everything set up, but we're still disconnected from the Cato cloud. The SDP client has not established a secure tunnel 
into the Kato Sassy Cloud so this workstation is unsecured. Now that's easy to fix. We will click that connect button, the shield will spin round, a tunnel will be open to one of our nearest connected pops, and bear in mind these pops are worldwide with the same level of software policies procedures applied to everyone, and in a few seconds I am fully connected. So what I can do is bring up a new Chrome window. This is an incognito window, so no cookies, no caching, no anything. Hop in here, go to rbicheck.com, and you'll notice the behavior is a little bit different. It says connecting to your site. The traffic has been intercepted. We've identified this as being potentially malicious. We're launching this through the secure browsing.kato network site. And as you see in the bottom right hand corner, downloads are disabled. I cannot download this file. This file cannot automatically be injected into my system. You have this nice green banner at the top that says remote browser isolation. So your users, your end customers, know that this traffic is going through the Kato Secure site. Now, some people may panic when they see securebrowsing.katonetworks.com and think, oh, this might be a phishing attempt. My URLs have been redirected. So the green banner at the top of the page just reinforces and reminds your users that this is a legitimate thing. Now, in the event that somebody tries to actively download a file, and I'll click the I am a human button to download the file, you'll notice the capture is successful, but downloads are still disabled. Now, just to show, as I mentioned earlier, if I wanted to start, if I wanted to view the developer tools, if I wanted to start looking at the URLs and just inspecting this element, you'll notice that we're actually just showing an RDP canvas element and an RDP audio element instead of the full page. We're not downloading the actual code of the website. And just like that, in a few clicks, in a few menu settings, in a few changes, your uncategorized and undefined URLs are protected from a whole multitude of unsecured connections. Okay, folks, so in less than 15 minutes, you now understand what RBI is, how it works, why you need it, and how to configure it. We've applied it to an SDP user, and we've shown it in action. That's pretty quick. If you want to know more about remote browser isolation, hop on over to catonetworks.com, and until next time, you stay safe out there. Bye for now.